I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. All right, I, I want to inform you that Haiti is in crisis right now. Probably the worst it has ever been. I mean, from Papa Doc to Baby Doc uh, to Aristide, Joseph Aristide. Right now, Haiti is at a crisis where they assassinated the prime minister going back a couple of years ago. We understand that his wife was a part of that assassination. But I also want to tell you about what's happening in Nigeria. You know, Sabbath and Rainbow and Precious' father is in town now. Uh, he's from Nigeria by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Or by, he's from Atlanta, Georgia by way of Nigeria. Last week, members of gangs, like the street gangs that are roaming through Haiti, captured 300 young schoolgirls from the Nigerian around the capital of Nigeria took those 300 young girls. We don't know where they are. Nobody's heard from them. I think the group that takes them is called Boca or something of that nature, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That was in Nigeria last week. They came back a couple of days later and were able to take a few more girls. Now, these young girls, they're young Nigerian girls. They're just beginning their menstruation period. They're, many of them are virgins. And they get sold off as sex slaves. They get sold off into Dubai, Saudi Arabia, into Moscow, into various places where you got wealthy, very filthy, rich, wealthy men who want young girls. And that's what happened to them. And you never hear from them again. Their families never hear from them again. And Nigeria has been a place where... Uh, this kind of kidnapping, abducting, because this this guy, this group called Boca, has been proficient in making billions of dollars by selling these young virgin, just menstruating Nigerian girls. So from Haiti to Nigeria, we got some major problems uh, in terms of black or Hamite people as who they really are and where they are as they stand before the Lord. But I want to I wanna do something now that's going to probably require of me to be able to do a little bit more statistical, if you will, strategic uh, dynamics in terms of my reporting. But I just want to give you a broad scope now of what I want to say to you. And if you look at what's happening in Nigeria now, listen to me very carefully. Uh, 300 young, just beginning to ministrate, virgin young girls who nothing about sex got kidnapped and are being sold to very wealthy, uh, rich uh, Muslim Saudi Arabians, uh, Adubai, Dubai rather, and, and, and some of those other nations, those very wealthy nations, Qatar, et cetera, where you got these extraordinary wealthy men who could have this many, of those 300 girls, one of those Islamic wealthy 500, 500 Rolls Royce men could buy 30 of those young girls just for himself. Listen to your pastor. Those, 300 of those young girls could have only gone to 10 men because they don't just want one. And they're all young. They're just beginning their menstrual. And they'll buy 10 of them and pay those, that Boca group, I don't know, did y'all see the movie Taken with Liam Nelson? Y'all remember that? It's an old movie now, but Liam Nelson first played, I think, in Schindler's List. Schindler's List. And they discovered him as a pretty good actor. They put him in that movie Taken and he took off where his daughter was kidnapped and sold to this wealthy, uh, if you will, businessman. Please listen to Pastor Manning. What's happening? You see, when you hear people like Al Sharpton, even Dr. Martin Luther King and others talk about how awful slavery was, do you know that black people are still selling black slaves? Now, right now, they're not bothering with the young men. They're just capturing women and making them sex slaves. They're not coming to America anymore, but they're going to that rich area of all that oil-rich area of Qatar, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, that's where they're going, and that's where they're going to spend the rest of their lives. Their parents will never hear from them again, and these wealthy men can have sex with 10 young girls, and when they get tired of them, he'll throw them out, and they may get married to somebody, and they'll go to Nigeria and buy another 10. 
What's the difference between what black men are doing to young virgin menstruating girls in Nigeria now as to what the so-called uh, black men, or the black, not so-called, but the black men did to the slaves that came to America in 1619 and thereafter? Are you, are you, are you, and, and I, I, listen, I condemn the people. Al Sharpton is the most vicious snake. Eric Adams is another snake and a dog. Uh, every mayor, I don't care who they are, whether it's a light foot out there in Chicago, uh, the mayor of Houston, the Barry down in Washington, D.C. or Atlanta, Georgia, they're all are snakes. Let me tell you something. If you were to ever open your eyes and finally listen to the truth and stop listening to these pension old Negroes, and stop listening to these pension old Negroes who are being paid for and overshadowed by the liberals, the Democrats, the LGBTQ, the George Soros of the world, they make you think that black people are progressing. But I want to tell you something. I want to tell you and what they're doing right now, they have always been, this, you got a black man on television, a black man like Eddie Glord, who's a sickle, psychopath on, at Princeton University. Listen, they have always been house Negroes. From the day the first black foot, barefoot, set foot in South Carolina off of the slave ship after being sold by slaves, the same way Boko is selling slaves now of these young virgin menstruating girls to these wealthy men in, in the East. The, the, they, were, they, were, they started putting together house Negroes because the house, the, the get together a house Negro, make the other Negroes think that they're doing something. Every last one of these politicians, I don't give a damn who they are. I don't give a damn from everybody, from, uh, from Dennis, from uh, uh, Eric Adams to every other black mayor that has ever, David Dinkins, whose name I'm, let me, let me tell you, Carl Stokes out in, in, in St. Louis years ago, everyone, they are nothing but house Negroes. And they, 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 but the term that now best fits them is the pinch nose Negro. So you got all these house Negroes out here now. But they're still selling black people. They're still profiting from it. And they're still doing the brainwashing. They're still doing the same old brainwashing scheme that they've done for years. And you black people went for it. I think the scam of all was to put black, uh, Barack Hussein Obama as a so-called black man when they had a white mama. You talk about black people going for the okie doke. You talk, and it was the House Negroes and the liberals and the George Soros of the world that promoted that nonsense that, Ob that Obama was the first black president. But Obama became president and gave y'all, pardon me, this word is in the Bible. But some of y'all are so sensitive, you're not in touch with reality. You know this word as good as I am. And though I am a preacher, I have a right to tell it like it is. I have a right to say it the way it is. Obama gave you his ass and everything else. The kiss to black people did nothing for you. I'm telling you, this, uh, what is going on now in Haiti? What is going on now in Nigeria? What is going on now in like, New York City? What's going on in Los Angeles, San Francisco? It's such a scourge now. Most businesses are leaving San Francisco because of the black leadership. In every place else, whether it's Richmond, Virginia, or wherever you got these black Negroes, and then you got people like T.D. Jakes and Puff Daddy, they all, well... There's a word that rhymes with baguettes. We rhyme with baguette. You ever go to France and they give you some baguette bread? Well, there's a word that Eric Adams and T.D. Jakes and LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and a bunch of Tyler Perry, there's a word that rhymes with baguette. It's who they are. There's a word that Al Sharpton and Barack Obama, there's a word that rhymes with baguette. It's who they are. It is a scam. It is a shame. Listen, let me tell you something. For every one of these, house, and they're nothing but house Negroes. I mean, didn't you see that, 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 that I, I, I named them pinch Negroes because the liberals got together now. The politicians, Jim Clyburn and all the rest, and Hakeem Jeffries, they're all nothing but house Negroes, highfalutin house Negroes. 
down with the selling. Every last one of these men you see on their, on their and then you got that pimp, uh, Jay-Z, and that slut, that slut, that uh, Beyonce, bounce your butt, slut, bounce your butt, slut. Jay-Z said to that, to bounce your butt, slut. Bounce your butt, and then he fans her butt as a slut. Fans, bounce your butt, slut. Bounce your butt. All of them, it, 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 and and put promoting the impression that somehow or other black people are doing worse now, They're doing better now than they've ever done. We're doing worse now. Now I don't hate black folk. I just tell them the truth. They've lost all of They sold it out. David Dinkins sold it out. Al Sharpton took eight hundred thousand dollars and said. On the on on scouts on on his mama's left breast, that he would never lead a boycott against gentrification. The Jews gave him eight hundred thousand dollars, and the boy went on television, went down there and started having baguette, baguette. The word we ran with baguette. With that boy, Barack half breed half breed Obama. So listen. So look at what's happening in Haiti down there now, right? Everybody, what a shame. They've been taking young girls from Nigeria. Elder Flo, I don't know what you and Sabbath are going to do about that. They've been taking these young girls and sending them over there to these impotent men on Viagra over there in Dubai and Qatar and Saudi Arabia. And these men have been buying up plant loads of Viagra to these 13 and 14 year old girls, 10 at a time. And yet y'all running around here talking about black people are on the move. We're doing better. We've never done worse. We've never had as many black men in prison. For every one black male we have, we have 100,000 black men in prison. We got over 2.5 2 million black men in prison. We got another 1.5 million men either out on parole or in jail awaiting on court. We got over 15% of the 30 million black people in America have been in jail. So Trump said, well, I know y'all recognize me now because more than 15% of black people have been in jail. The other 25% haven't been arrested yet. So I'll take a mugshot and we can get down together. It's a shame. If 15% of the white population of America, which makes up about 300,000 uh, Americas in general, it would be 45 million white people who would be in prison. Well, you got 15% of black people in prison, on parole, in jail, or going to court. If, that, if 45 million white people were in jail or in prison, it, America would be a cauldron. It would be boiling over, but nobody, we're doing, we got a black man. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a black man. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a black president. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sound like a damn bunch of chimpanzee monkeys running after a banana vine over there somewhere in the darkest part of the hot and tot of Africa. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a black man. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got our first black president. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got a black judge. Ooh, 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 ooh. You've never seen that? We're worse. No, it's never been as bad. Let me tell you something. It is the, the state of black America has never been as bad as it is right now, and it's getting worse. And I and I alone seem to be the only one willing to tell the truth. I and I alone. And I'm going to keep on telling the truth. These pension those Negroes, I'm going to tell you something. I would rather have a white man as mayor of every one of these cities that you got a black man, if we can get the 2.5 million men out of prison, get them back home, get them learning and understanding how to take care of their children, how to love their wives, how to go to work, how to be responsible, even though they're making less than minimum wage, at least at home with their children, they're not in prison. Let me tell you something, less than $7 an hour, if you're making $5 an hour, but you're home with your children, making love to your wife at night, y'all living in tight quarters, everybody here, what everybody else doing, you got one bathroom, that's still better than him being in prison, selling a life sentence, and the children growing up without a father, and the wife being lonely and cold at night, better than $5 an hour. 
than having a black male. Y'all some crazy ass, well, I used the word ass before, I've already got my permission. Y'all some crazy ass people. Crazy as hell, black people. We're doing better now. Look at, oh, and we got all these organizations, we got a woke all, we got a woke, we have got to wake up black people to black history. No, you don't. Never seen anything like y'all. So what y'all going to do about the 300 girls? What y'all going to do about the 1,500 girls that were taken several years ago in Nigeria? What y'all going to do? <laughs> what y'all going to do, Jared Kushner? What y'all going to do to Donald Trump? Went over there and danced over there with the Saudi Arabians. Got all them young black girls, 10 of them in his bedroom at night. Got 10 of these beautiful black girls, and they're beautiful too. Oh, Lord, you ain't seen. Oh, Lord, have, oh, Lord I have to watch myself now. I won't go too far. Don't go too far. Oh, Lord, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> Oh, Lord, you say 18, 19-year-old black girl, oh, Lord, have mercy. Gee, it, it's like somebody colored, uh, made the, 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 the prototype for a woman and, and then colored it mahogany. Lord, have mercy. And these Saudi Arabian cutter, these Dubai, got these 10 of them in the bedroom with him at one time. When he gets rid of them, he calls that Boca group, go get me more. And that's what's happening down in Haiti right now. Haitian got some of the best women, black women, some of the most beautiful women, I want to tell you some on planet. They got the, the women in Haiti. I mean, they got a rhythm, Lord, have mercy, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and to make a 90-year-old man get ready. He don't need no Viagra. All you got to do is just look at that woman down there in Haiti. They're beautiful, I tell you. I said, they're beautiful down there, I tell you. But look at what they're doing. The gangs are taking over, and they're being, fought, they're being promoted by these leftists, if you will, these so-called, if you must, liberals to take over Haiti and to stop it from becoming a great and free nation that it possibly becomes. So let's hear, let me wrap all this up. I perhaps could be more strategic, I suppose, statistical. I could give you some more data. Y'all like to see that. Well, according to the 1920 census and one thing after the other. But the truth is the truth. And you know it's true. Black people are doing worse now than they ever done economically, spiritually, morally, church-wise. And they're more stupid now. Let me tell you something. Some of you Negroes running around here running for office talking about like those black people in Congress or that Cory Bush woman. Let me tell you something. If your great grandfather saw what an insult you were and how ignorant you are, he slapped you into the middle of next week running around here talking about this black talk when our families are going to hell. Children don't have fathers anymore. It's the sickest thing you've ever seen. But I'll tell you this. Atla is an answer, and God has sent me. And a whole lot of people don't like what I have to say. That's because they dumb as hell. They erase black people are as racist as hell. Let me tell you something. Black people are black before they're Christian. I'm going to tell you something now. And if you ain't got a black Jesus, you can't talk to black people. That Jesus got to be black. Black people are black before they're Christian. They're black before they're anything. They're black before them. Black people worship blackness before they worship the Holy Ghost. I mean, but black people are black before they worship the, the Bible. When the words are read in the New Testament, the words are read mean Jesus is speaking. But the black people only worship the black word. They don't worship the red word. Black people are, are the most racist ass people you've ever seen on the planet. Stay away from me. If you can, God help you. If you can move to a neighborhood where there ain't no black folk. Because they're racist. They ain't got no understanding. They ain't never built nothing. They ain't never built a seaworthy ship or a comb or a pair of tennis shoes on their own. They ain't never built nothing. They ain't never built no major city. There ain't nowhere black city on the planet where you want to go and live. They ain't never built nothing. They ain't never done. Now, that's not to say that they can't. And that's why I'm here in Atla, to tell them that they can. They can. But they've been cursed. They've been cursed. Now, they can run around and dribble that basketball. They can do that. But they can't build no Wall Street. They can't build no major economic, if you will, development. They can't build no major city. Did anybody want to live in hell? They had Harlem and they lost that. They turned that over to the white man. Turned that over to the buttermilk man. They made Harlem now buttermilk white. They made it, they gave it, turned it over, gave it up, walked away from it, sold out. 
that Pastor Manny, well, he ain't for the black man. He's not for the LGBTQ. And you ought to be able to love who have been able to love. I, I just think there's something wrong with that, Pastor Manny. Why? Because he, why don't he get with all the other, all the other preachers like Obama? All the other preachers, oh, well, you know, why? I know what. That's a damn bunch of monkeys swinging on a banana vine. Never seen anything like it. Anyway, so we ain't going to never see those girls. We didn't see the ones they took four or five years ago over there in Nigeria. We ain't going to see those girls no more. And, you know, potentially, <laughs> they ain't going to never be able to connect with their heritage. Their introduction to sex is with an 80-year-old man who got a pot belly who can't find his thing unless he ties a string to it. Now, some of y'all might think that's a little bit risky. You might think it's a little bit much. Please forgive me. I don't mean, I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm just trying to keep it real. I don't mean to insult anybody. I know some of y'all are sensitive. I appreciate that. Thank God for your sensitivity. Thank God that you like to keep yourself pure. You don't want to listen to a whole lot of stuff. But for a 13-year-old girl that just got took from Nigeria, her sex, first sexual experience is going to be with an 85-year-old man who got a pot belly they can't even find this thing unless he ties a string to it. And that's going to be her first experience. And she may never get loving from a show sure enough young man. She may never get it. May never. And it wasn't the 80-year-old man or the white man that took her and took her virginity, took her from her mother, took her from her father, took her from her homeland. It was a black man. It was a black politician. It was a black elder who lives a fat life right there in Nigeria or in Haiti, who lives off the fat of the lamb by selling these young black girls, this young black flesh, this young ministrating flesh. He sells it to the highest bidder. It's black on black. Savagery is what it is. And I'm calling it out. And every time from this day forth, you never, ever hear me again. Every time you see a man that's a black politician, you're looking at a sellout. You're looking at a pinch nose. He has no integrity. There ain't no way George Soros would have allowed him to become the mayor, a dog catcher, or legislator, or congressman. Ain't no way the liberal white establishment would have allowed him to be on television or allowed him to be a politician if he was not a sellout, if he was not committed to selling out and turning his back and profiteering from the ignorance of his own people, black people. That's the only way you can get to be mayor of New York City. That's the only way you can get to be mayor of Chicago. That's the only way you get to be congressman. That's the only way. That's the only way. You got to sell out. Without that, you're worthless. And with it, you're profitable for the man and for his plan. But I'm a gangster. I'm a bust it open, wide open. I'm here and I ain't stopping. I got the power of God, the anointing of God, the sword of David, and I'm coming for all you house Negroes. I'm coming for all you pension ogres. There ain't no hiding place. I'm coming for you and I'm not going to rest to liberty and freedom. And black people can walk around and now call themselves Hamites and be free. That's right. Finally, not legislation of civil rights, but free by the blood of Jesus and the truth of our Savior, our Lord and Savior. I'm Jesus' servant. I'm the Lord's servant. I'm James Evan Manning, everybody. And don't you ever forget it.